right, you guys, welcome back. I don't often revisit cars on the channel. Maybe if they've gone through some sort of significant change, a big boost in power handling, or if we have like a different way, a different context, uh, or a way to showcase them and show you guys them in a different scenario, right? Behind me is an exception, okay? I drove this 1984 8.6 about seven years ago. The big thing is it's got an S2000 F20C under the hood, we're up to 9,000 RPM, and the current owner, the one that Patrick sold the car to, has taken it in his own direction. Now we've all had, I'm sure, these moments if we've built the car, I can't speak to that, but if you have had one of these moments where like an old friend will come to you and be like, hey, whatever happened to that car you owned and modified, and then you have to spill the sad truth, which is, hey, the current owner, they ruined it. They took what you had put so much time and love and energy into it and just taken it where you did not want to take it. But this is not one of those stories. Uh, and here we'll just go for a drive and show you guys exactly why. So let's do it. All right, you guys, so to start this thing, because it's it's riding the line between 80s era and of course S2000, 2000s era, we have two keys and a start button. It's like the worst aftermarket ignition system start button ever, but that's what Honda did, OEM on the S2000. So one key in the, in the steering column and then ignition. There you go, fuel pump prime is the actual Honda key. And then we have the engine start button from the S2000 over here. Short clutch, crazy short shifter. The pedals are so small. Everything is so close together. But the basic premise is here. Longitudinally mounted, naturally aspirated, four cylinder, just more power than a 4A GE and way more power than a 4AC, which is what this particular 86 actually came with from the factory. Uh, this started life obviously as a North American AE86 Corolla hatch, but it was an SR5, it was not a GTS. So <laughs> this, this car in stock form had about 70, 75 horsepower, somewhere uh, around there. Not enough to even merge onto a freeway. Not enough, even for a car that weighs nothing, and the 86 here still weighs nothing. sounds and the vibrations coming through are just incredible. Now, as Patrick said, this is as close to just grabbing onto the engine block and holding on for dear life. That's, as, that's what we're aiming for here. And that's what Patrick was aiming for uh, about 15 to 20 years ago when he initially built this car in the mid 2000s. It feels like you're basically sticking your hand up against the engine block and just hold on. Basically is what it feels like you feel closer to death than you should, <laughs> really. I was looking for VTEC. The VTEC kick actually isn't all that pronounced. Of course, this is an F20C, so it's an AP1 S2000 engine. It revs to 9,000 RPM. All right, no, it has some torque. You've, you've got to be around 4,000, but when you have 9,000, 4,000 is like 2,000 <laughs> in a V8. So you've actually got decent torque here. Second to begin to heel toe. <laughs> oh my. It's the perfect engine swap for this car. Oh yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, it's so so easy to play with. Oh, wow. The road 
hesitation. It, it, there's no way. There's no sense of like the suspension being loaded and then mid corner, you've got it loaded and then you have to kind of ease out of it gradually and be careful not to upset the car. That's like, that's most modern cars. It, it becomes a part of you, it really does. You know, the cliche, the car is wrapped around me. It's become part of me. It's true. Patrick's whole idea behind this build, the ethos behind the build, was a track car. He wanted to take it uh, from being a car that could do everything to a very laser focused, purpose built car. Uh, and he liked to slide it, you know, a car that was playful at the limit, but that could take track abuse and you could go to the dealer and get parts for cheap. And Dylan, the new owner, has softened it up a little bit. So he's brought it down, he's toned it back down. All right, dip it in. Oh, it sticks. Wow. Not a whole lot of confidence in the brake pedal. It's a little bit on the softer side. <laughs> Throttle feels amazing though. Of course, the F20C is still cable throttle, which is a huge win. Uh, some of the biggest changes. Patrick used to have a fuel cell in the back. Track car, uh, be able to pick up the fuel a little bit easier. What Dylan's done is actually gone ahead and found a reproduction OEM gas tank. So that's a little bit closer to factory. The second thing I think is the biggest change in how this car feels and what softened it up. He's swapped out the solid suspension bushings that Patrick had previously installed for the track and replaced them with poly bushings. So still stiff, <laughs> if you guys can't tell, so much feeling, but just not as many of those like bone crushing rattles. There's no hangover with the H6 anymore. Uh, it's definitely softer than it was. It's not soft, softer than it was. Steering wheel's different. We've got a bride Lomax in here now too. The Cusco roll cage is still here, bolt in. So Dylan's also, <laughs> the diff is still incredibly loud. Um, it's a Tomei 1.5 way instead of a two way. So still wildly aggressive. Aside from the engine and exhaust, this feels like an entirely different car. We've got four links from Hard Race. Those poly bushings I mentioned were done at the same time. New control arms and roll center adjusters were installed. A new fuel system, of course, complements the tank and an endless ton of aging details got their day of retirement. Dylan's replaced the door handles, hinges, signal lights, window and rear hatch seals. The hood and hatch were kept carbon fiber, and it goes without saying, but to bring it home is the Zenki front bumper, yellow fogs, and the unforgettable black and white panda paint. One of Dylan's most rare and tough to accomplish changes, he told me, is the OEM maroon interior bits that just look so good and his collection of rare steering wheels from the period. They're all different sizes for different scenarios. If that's not driving obsession, I don't know what is. The list goes on and on. New carpet for the whole car and of course these Tanabe CST Presidio Demon Camber wheels. How's that for a name, right? I'm probably butchering the pronunciation, but I have heard they're quite popular on MX-5s in Japan. So if you're looking for an engine that's just going to keep as close as possible the original character of the 8.6, this in my opinion pretty much fits the bill, right? It's an NA, four cylinder engine, 16 valves, and it revs high. That's it, it really is that simple. And it is a lot easier, I feel, to do this with older 80s cars and cars that are, that are a lot lighter. Because in a modern car, if you want an NA high revving engine, you're probably going to have to sacrifice power. And that takes a little bit of like a hit to the ego to do that, right? Uh, whereas here, you get more power and it keeps the authenticity of the 8.6 driving experience just uh, with everything up to modern spec, a little bit more reliable, probably. <laughs> Still sounds good. Um, of course, you don't have anything crazy going on here like ITBs, but you do have a uh, cable throttle still. If you were to try and take a later car from the late 90s or early 2000s, you know, what are you gonna put in a Skyline, an NA engine that's gonna beat or, you know, make more sense from a driving perspective 
uh, and from kind of a sensory perspective than an RB. It's already got the best engine possible in that car. Go back to the 80s, you've got, of course, the old Datsun Zs. You look at Sung Kang's. That's, that's a perfect upgrade. Similar kind of scenario, similar kind of ethos that we have here. Just an NA, a more modern NA engine that fits the exact philosophy that the original car came with. And it, it fits perfectly. Uh, it doesn't make the car heavier. It doesn't add any turbo leg or anything like that. So a uh, great fit here. Shout out to Patrick uh, for building this car so many years ago. Our friend Adam Trinder at AMT Machine Shop actually did a lot of the original fab work on this car like 15 years ago, way before uh, I met him and did a few videos with him. Really clean setup and it's a testament to the engineering of both Toyota and Honda that this has held up uh, like 20 years <laughs> in the car and it's been beat on since then. So, all right, let's get back in the car and keep driving. I'll remind you of a few parts, the few key components it does have uh, that Patrick installed back in the day. It has FC RX-7 front brakes. It's got four pistons up front. It's kind of a funny period for the 8.6, especially in the North American market. Some of these came with power steering. Some of them came manual steering. Uh, I think most in North America came with power steering, as far as I could tell, because we're lazier, accurate. Uh, like I said, this one's got power windows which is insane for a car with an interior that looks, I mean, this is the 80s, boxy interior. Almost every car that was like, I don't know, 20 to $50,000 at the time looked like this. Uh, if it was built in Japan, trying to get the three two heel toe it's tough though <laughs> it doesn't dart around nearly as much it's definitely a lot more composed for the street and Dylan's dailying this car like it's not quite daily material anything could be a daily what am I talking about you you can make anything a daily it just takes a lot of convincing internal convincing self-deception oh Perfect example right there, big bumps. But they don't really upset the car. It's a little on the bouncy side, still has a little bit to get worked out here, but oh my God. Heel towing takes a little bit to get used to just because the, the brake pedal, it, it feels like a sponge. It's not the greatest, but the car is so light, like you could feel the grab you can feel the car grab, the brakes grab, but I don't feel it through the pedal. So there's there's a bit of a, like a false confidence in the brake pedal. Uh, so it goes far down and then the gas pedal's still like way up here. So it's a little bit tough to heel toe. It's so much fun. It is a ridiculous amount of fun. That's it. That's basically everything I could say about this 8.6. Amazing car. Please hit the like button if you haven't already. It really helps us out. And if you want to check out our website, roadsandtravel.com, we just restocked a bunch of our embroidered engine code key tags, including, of course, the F20C, the F22C, and the 4AGE. So uh, that link is in the description. We'll see you soon.